Hey everyone, apologies for not posting for a while. I will get into the process of releasing more tutorials over the next period. Welcome to the fourth episode of how to create your own first person shooter single player game. In this episode, we will change our enemy cube into a humanoid enemy character and put an animator controller on so that our enemy can move around and attack when provoked. If you want to follow along with the series, check out the card that displays at the top right for the playlist. If you like the tutorials I create, then make sure to like and comment and subscribe down below and join the discord. If you want to support my creation of games and YouTube tutorials, then consider pledging on Patreon. Even a $1 can buy me a coffee which will fuel me for extra hours. When we have the Unity project open, then we are going to get our free humanoid asset from the Unity asset store, so that our enemy does not remain a cube. So go to the link down below which is the Jammo character mix and jam asset pack and add it to your assets. In Unity, click on the window link at the top and open up your package manager. Inside your package manager, make sure to go to packages at the top left and select my assets. Search for the Jammo character asset pack and download and import it. If it pops up with a warning that states it has dependencies in it, just select install or upgrade. Once the import window is open, just select import and once this is done, you will find the Jammo Character Asset Pack inside the Assets folder. Now move the Jammo Character Asset Pack to the Imported Assets folder. Head to Edit, Render Pipeline, Universal Render Pipeline, and Upgrade Project Materials to make sure the new assets have the materials upgraded to our rendering system. And now for animations. You can use Mixamo.com, which is also linked down below, and open the Jammo character folder in your imported assets folder and open models and right click the Jammo model and show in Explorer. Once logged into Mixamo.com, click on upload character and drag and drop your character.fbx file inside of the box. Once the character is loaded, if you see your character is animating, then the rig works with Mixamo. Hit next and search for an idle animation and download. Let's search for a running animation and download. You can download both animations with the skin of the character as we will only be using the animation at the end of the day. Now that we have downloaded our animations, inside your asset folder, create a new folder and call it animations. Now drag and drop your downloaded idle and run animation into your animations folder. Now that the animations are dragged over, click on each animation and rename the animation file accordingly. Click on the idle animation and head to animation and then we will change Mixamo to idle. And on the running animation we will change Mixamo to run. Expand each file and click on the animation of the idle and hit Ctrl and D to duplicate and click on the run animation and hit Ctrl and D to duplicate the run animation as well. Create a new folder called Animations inside of the Animations folder and drag and drop the duplicated idle and run animation inside of the folder. Click on the idle animation and make sure to tick Loop Time and click on the run animation and tick loop time to make them loopable. Delete the original animations as we won't need them anymore. Go into your imported assets folder and expand your Jammo character asset pack and then go to the prefab folder and open up your Jammo character prefab. Once your prefab is open in the inspector window, remove the movement script and remove the character controller and remove the character skin controller. Now we can start working with our assets. Firstly, we will need our animator controller. So go to your animations folder yet again and create a new folder and call it animator controllers. Once this is done, inside your animator controllers folder, right click and create a new animator controller and call it enemy AC. While we still have the Jammo player prefab open, Make sure to drag the newly created animator controller inside of the prefabs controller. Now that we have our animator controller, double click it to open it up and by right clicking on any space, you can then create an empty state and call it idle. And again next to your idle state, create another empty state and call it run. 
Now you have your two animated states, but we also have to create a transition between the states. On your idle state, right click and create a transition and connect it with the run state and create another transition back from run to idle. Click on parameters at the top left and click on the plus and create a new bool parameter and call it is running. Inside the animator, click on the transition going from idle to run and in the inspector box at the bottom, in conditions, click the plus and make sure the condition is equal to is running and the condition is true. And untick has exit time so that this is false. Click on the idle state and open your animations folder and drag and drop the idle animation into the empty motion. Do the same for the transition from run to idle but set the condition to false and make sure to drag in the motion on the run state. Inside of your prefabs folder, go into your enemy prefab. Go inside your imported assets and into Jamo character prefab and drag and drop the character inside of the enemy prefab and reset the transform. Select the enemy prefab game object and remove the box collider and create a new capsule collider through add component. In the enemy inspector window under transform, set the scale on the Y to 1. Remove the cube mesh filter component and mesh renderer component and adjust the capsule collider to be around the full character. When you are happy with the capsule collider, select the canvas with the health bar and drag it above the character. Now for the script that makes it all work, go to your asset folder and into your scripts folder and create a new script and call it enemy AI. Select your enemy prefab and attach the enemy AI script and open it up. Now that we are in Visual Studio or any other editor that you might be using, we can delete the start and update methods for now. At the top, we will add unityengine.ai to pull through some of the functionality that we need, for instance, the navmesh agent, and we will call our navmesh agent by typing require component type of navmesh agent. For our game object to know where it can move and not move, we require the navmesh agent. This makes it easier, but you can still add component in the inspector window if you don't want to add this line of code. This just ensures that the navmesh agent is always there, and if it wasn't there, it will automatically be created. Now we need to create a variable for the enemy chase range. So we'll type serialized field of private float, and the variable will be called chase range, which will be equal to 5 float. Create another variable serialized field of private float called distance is equal to 2.5f by default. This will be so that our enemy knows to stop chasing when he is 2.5 distance away from the player. This will be the attack range in a sense. Now let's create a couple of more variables. Private navmesh agent called navmesh agent so that we can change value on this game object's navmesh agent and private float distance to target equal mathf.infinity. Here we create our distance to target and we use mathf.infinity so that we don't have to assign it to zero or any other specific numeral variable. Then private bool is provoked equal false. We will use the is provoked value to check when to chase and when to attack or stop. And our last variable private transform called target which will return the player's transform. Now we're going to create our start method. In our start method, we are going to assign a value to the navmesh agent variable, and it will be this game object component. So we will type navmesh agent equal get component navmesh agent. We also want to assign a value to our target, which will be the player in the scene. The player capsule game object in the scene currently has the tag player assigned to it. So it is normally not a good idea to find a game object in the scene as the level gets bigger and bigger. But if this is a small game, then finding one game object is still worth it. And we know for this game that the scenes will be small and won't cause a performance issue. So to assign this value, we will type target equal game object dot find game object with tag player dot transform. Now that we have assigned our target, we can use a method inside our navmesh agent value to go towards our target, which means our enemy will be able to go to our player. 
Now let us create our update method and in our update method we want to assign a value to our distance to target to get an indication of the distance between the target and this game object. For this we can write the following distance to target equal vector3.distance target.position transform.position. We are then going to use the bool is provoked and write the following. If is provoked is true, then we will create a new method called engage target and then hit control and period and generate the method. Else if distance to target is less or equal than chase range, then is provoked is equal to false. Should we shoot our enemy, we also want him to do something about it. So we are going to create the public method on damage taken and call this in the gun script. Now let's head over to the gun script. Inside the gun script and in our private shoot method, we are going to add a line inside the if statement and right after the particle effect is played. We are going to press enter and call our on damage taken method by typing hit.transform.gameObject.getComponent enemy AI dot on damage taken. Back inside the enemy AI script in the on damage taken method, we will also state that is provoked equal true, which will trigger the engage target method inside of the update method. The generate engage target method will require three new methods. We first want the enemy to face its target and then we want the enemy to check if it is close enough or not. Remove the throw new exception and the first method we write is face target. Hit control and period to generate the method. Then, if distance to target is greater than distance is true, then we create a new method called chase target, which will cause the enemy to move. Hit control and period to generate the method. Else, if we are close enough, then we can either attack or wait. In this case, we will write wait and the attack method at a different stage. Hit control and period to generate the method. Now that we have the three methods created, let us go into the face target method. As we provoke our target, we want him to react and face the player. For this, we can write vector3 called direction equal target position minus the transform dot position dot normalized to tell the enemy that the target facing direction is anywhere within the 3D game scene. Then we want to be able to rotate the enemy to make it turn towards the target by writing quaternion called look rotation equal quaternion dot look rotation new vector 3 direction dot x and on the y is 0 and then direction dot z. Now that we have a look rotation value, we can then use quaternion dot slurp to change the rotation of the enemy over time instead of just snapping the rotation instantly. So let's write transform.rotation equal quaternion.slurp and pass in transform.rotation, then the look rotation, and then by time dot delta time times 5f. Now let's head into the chase target method. This is where we bring our enemy character to life. We want to change the is running parameter inside the animator which is attached to one of the child game objects inside of the enemy prefab. To get this animator, we will write get component in children animator dot set bool is running true. Because of the fact that we are using the wait method, we will need to make sure that navmesh agent isn't stopped as we will be passing in a destination for the enemy. For this, we will write navmesh agent dot is stopped is equal to false. Then to start moving the character, we will write navmesh agent dot set destination target dot position. Let us go into the last method, which is wait. For this, we copy the get component in children line in the above method and set the parameter to false. And to make sure the character stops its destination, we will write navmesh agent dot is stopped equal true. Save your script and head back into Unity. Select your enemy prefab if you see it floating in the air as well and change the Y to 0 for the position transform. Last thing to do is to select the ground game object and make it static. Then go to Window, AI, Navigation and make sure that you select on the ground game object still. 
when inside of navigation and that navigation static is enabled and navigation area is set to walkable. Click on bake and bake your nav mesh. Now press play and let's test. Once we shoot the enemy to provoke it, we will see that it does run towards us and stops at the distance we provided. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, join the Discord channel if you want to learn more with game development and if you would just like to join the community or ask for any advice, check out all the links down below for all of the information. Source code is also down below as well as the full Git project. Keep well and see you in the next episode. Cheers.